Math 31, welcome to section 5.2. We're going to take a look at power functions and then we're going to extend to polynomial functions. And there's a slight difference between the two of these. We'll start with powers and then we'll move on to polynomials. And you've actually already done a couple of polynomials. Linear functions are a subset of polynomial functions. And all of those quadratic functions we just talked about in 5.1, they're a certain type of polynomial function. So you, you've seen a couple of these before with degree one and degree two polynomials. And like I said, in chapter five, we're really gonna expand beyond just linears and quadratics. So by the end of this section, we wanna be able to identify power functions. And then I'm gonna introduce this idea of end behavior. That's maybe a new phrase for you. And it's going to become important in not only just Math 31, but as you move on. So, so you're gonna see this, this phrase pop up. So I'll show you the end behavior of power functions. And then we're going to extend that end behavior idea to polynomial functions. And we'll also talk about the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient of a polynomial. So if we wanna think about some vocab, every power function is automatically a polynomial. It's just that polynomials encompass so much more than just the power functions. And I'll explain the difference between the two of these once we pick up their definitions. So a power function is a function that can be represented in the form f of x, your function is equal to some coefficient, some number k times x raised to a power, specifically x raised to a power of n. So we would call this a degree n power function. And k and n have to be real numbers. And you'll hear me talk about k as being called the coefficient. So we love to sound fancy in math, right? So just said, instead of saying k is a number, right, which it is, we say it's the coefficient. It's the coefficient in front of the power term. All right, so with that, I'm gonna scoot the page up and we're gonna take a look at three functions and we're going to try and decide which of these three is a power function. And I'll kind of give away the ending right here. Only one of them is a power function. So for example one, which functions are power functions? Which means which of these functions can we write as a number, as a coefficient times x raised to a certain power? Well, let's take a look at this. I've got two powers multiplied together. If I simplify this a little bit, two times four is eight. And with x squared times x cubed, if you remember the base is the same, so we're gonna add the exponents. This is eight x to the fifth. Well, if we kind of start to match this up, you can see in this particular example, k is eight and n is five. Now you don't have to specify that, but I just wanna write it down so that we have it, k is eight and n is five, and this is indeed a power function. And since I told you that only one of these functions, oops, let me scooch this up just a bit, is a power function, you can, you can tell these next two are not going to be. Um, but especially for part B, there might be a question as to why is this not a power function? And it's not a power function because there are two terms here. In order to be a power function, you, you have solely the one term, just k times x to the n. So this function here is a sum of individual power functions because negative x to the fifth, that all by itself is a power function, and 5x cubed, that all by itself is a power function. But believe it or not, when you combine them, it's not a power function anymore. And that's when we'll start to call it a polynomial function. So let me say this is not a power function, But this type of function is what we refer to as a polynomial. So let me just write that sentence out. All right, so I wanna kind of unpack this word of polynomial, so poly, means many, right? And nomial means term, right? So many terms, many terms here, or many nomials, if you will. And that's what this is referring to, is that I have not just one power function, but two power functions. So I have two terms, and that's why we'll call it a polynomial, all right? So there's plenty of polynomials that are made up of power functions, but to be a power function in and of itself, you gotta just have the one term. I mean, we would actually refer to this as a binomial because there are two terms, right? 
this numerator here is also a binomial, this denominator also a binomial, and you've heard of trinomial, and then really after trinomial we just say polynomial, we don't have, like we don't have four terms, we don't really call it a quadnomial. I mean you could, go for it, have a good time with it, but usually we just go with the term poly. Okay, so part C, this is also not a power function, because it isn't of the form k times x to the n. The numerator is a polynomial, the denominator is a polynomial, they're specifically binomials on the numerator and denominator, but I want you to take a look that we have a fraction here, and I want to make sure I specify this, that this type of function is called a rational function. And it's a rational function because it is a ratio of polynomials, right? And we say this is a polynomial, again, it's not a power, it's comprised of powers. There, 2x to the fifth is a power, negative 1 is a power, 3x squared is a power, 4 is a power. So everything starts with power functions, right? We take our power functions, if we combine them, we call them a polynomial. If we take a ratio of polynomial functions, we call it a rational function. All right, so this one in part A is the only power function in and of itself, polynomial, rational. And as we progress through this chapter, by the end of this chapter, you should be able to sketch each of these functions with a whole bunch of traits like domain, range, x-intercept, y-intercept, end behavior, things like that. That is the goal of this chapter. Can you graph these functions that are beyond your toolkit functions? All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page we're gonna to go to the next example and start talking about that new concept of end behavior. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.